Lisa. So again, looking at your homework, um, or sorry, looking at your assignment sheet, what we're doing today is spheres. Dun, 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 dun. And similar solids. That one you haven't gotten. Okay. Um, now, if you would write this, actually, no, yeah, not yet, sorry. Okay, so for our spheres, we just have the one shape spheres, and we're only finding volume and surface area. We don't have lateral area for this. Why? Because there's no lateral sides, right? Uh, so there's no lateral area to find. We just have surface area, the entire surface. So when it says for the surface area in line formula, the square root of is that union squared or is that the formula? That's like actual radius cubed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in our previous class, we've been learning two shapes a day. Today it's just spheres to turn one. Now you do need to commit these formulas to memory. Our other formulas were very similar, right? Our cones were just one third of our here, or one third of our cylinders. This is different. Uh, so you do need to take the time to commit this to memory. Uh, if this helps you remembering it, great. If this teaches you, ignore what I'm about to say. But if you know your volume formula, you can pretty easily use that to get your surface area. Watch what we do with this. If I were to take my exponent of 3 and multiply that in front, and instead reduce this by 1, what does 3 times 4 thirds give us? 4, four by r squared. So technically what this is is that if I were to do the derivative of my volume that gives me my surface area, that's a little bit of calculus for you. Uh, so if that helps you remembering your surface area, you can just remember, memorize your volume, and then just simply bring down your exponent and reduce this to square. That'll give you your surface area, because your degrees cancel and four and five If that helps you remember it, great, you can use that. If that confuses you, throw that calculus out of your brain and wait until you're a senior to figure that out. Okay. So our volume formula is 4 thirds pi r, pi r cubed. Our surface area is 4 pi r <coughs> So let's just put <coughs> number one. It says my radius is 4 inches. So my volume, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So 4 cubed. What is 4 cubed? 64. <coughs> Uh, can I reduce 64 and 3? No. So we gotta multiply it out. What's 4 times 64? 256. And 256. Over 3. 248. Now you could write this as 256 pi over 3. Or 256 thirds pi, either way. Um, what are our units for this? Inches. 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 Questions with that? So again, it's just plugging and chucking. All right, so now our surface area. I personally think it should be written as SA. Uh, I think it's better to do that. All right, so our surface area is 4 pi r squared, so 4 pi. Radius squared, r squared. What is 4 squared? <laughs> and 4 times 16 gives us? 64. 64 pi. And again, we have units, Inch, uh, inches, what's squared? squared. Uh, and that's it. Uh, four squared times four squared. <coughs> okay. How does someone come up with the formula? Um, I'll have to look into it, but it comes back like using calculus. We can derive it. Yeah. <coughs> what? Um, so basically, if I were to take this curve and have cross sections of squares and then integrate the area of the circle. Yeah. But for us, it's not a test today. No. That's just so you can finish your homework after Okay, now let's take a look at number five. What do we call this shape? Hemisphere. Okay, so if I wanted to find my volume for this, what would I do with the volume of a sphere? Divide by two. Oh, just divide by two. Great. Minus. Now, what about my surface area? <coughs> divide by two. 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 And then add the base. Very good. 
Okay, so volume, we just have half the volume from before, right? So really we have one half of our volume formula, which is four thirds i and radius two. Uh, now for our surface area, and this is the one that I want to do, our surface area, we do want to do half of what we had before. So our formula was four i my radius squared. But like Kyle said, we have to then add on to that our base, because now that is a surface. What is my base here? <coughs> area on the circle. Yeah, circle. So area circle is four pi. And then radius squared. I don't like it. We should have memorized that r squared pi. Okay. For sake of time, I'm not going to have this actually simplify. Um, but I just want to make sure we're aware when we have the hemisphere. I can use cut in half, but you do have to consider that we have that piece. Okay, <laughs> that's really all there is for spheres. It's just another shape. Just two more ones you have to plug in. Was there a line between the front and the front? That's supposed to be a Alright, so the kind of bigger topic is our similar solids. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Got I would appreciate it if we stopped all this negativity. It's not going to help out the situation. It's not going to help out the atmosphere of the classroom. Yeah, we stop them right up there. We'll go over our homework. We'll go over questions. No, it's not yeah, so like we have two things each day. This is our Okay. So our other thing that we have to make is similar solids. Now we've done similar triangles. We've done similar shapes. Now we just have it with 3D shapes. What does it mean if we have something that's similar? What does it mean if they're similar? They're proportional. What does that mean to be proportional? <laughs> ratios. Good. Ratios are the same. So similar solids. Now we do need to specify a little bit because before um, we had just a 2D flat surface. Now we're doing the 3D shapes. Um, we have to say what are we talking about with ratios? And so with similar solids. Um, it's just the same shape, different sizes, right? So we just have same shape, but different sizes. They have the same ratio. What I'm going to say is that uh, corresponding dimensions, I'll talk about what that means in just a moment. Corresponding dimensions have the same ratio. So before when we had similar triangles, we would match up small with small, medium with medium, large with large. Now when I say corresponding dimensions, what I mean is we match up height with height. We match up area with area. We match up volume with volume. We match up um, length with length. So we're not just looking at the numbers, we're looking at what those numbers represent. Okay. So corresponding dimensions are the same ratio. Now what's neat with this, this is actually a theorem. It doesn't have a title. Um, we don't have a proof this unit. Yeah. But we have a theorem that says if the ratio, what we call the most basic ratio, like where we just compare the sides, what do we call it? <laughs> Simplify it down. Two words, starts with an S. Scale, scale factor, right? So if we talk about the scale factor, so we're just comparing like height with height and simplify it down, that would be our scale factor. So in the scale factor, of similar solids is A to B. So if the scale factor of similar solids is A to B, then the ratio of the areas is A squared to B squared. So if the scale factor of similar solids is A to B, and the ratio of the areas, that could be lateral area, that could be surface area, is A squared to B squared. Would that be that? Exactly, and that's our next piece. 
in the ratio of the volumes is A cubed to B cubed. So this really comes back to what units are we talking about. Now our scale factors, <coughs> the symbol that's where we're comparing like size to size, height to height, length to length. What are all of those things measured in? What are heights, lengths, circumferences, perimeters? What are all those measured in? Just units. Okay. Units. And what is area measured in? Units squared. Unit squared. Oh, we just take our ratio and square it? Our units squared. And what do we measure volume in? Units cubed. Units cubed. Whoa. So it's pretty easy to remember it. You just have to get it back down to your scale factor and then just think, okay, what are they asking? For? They want the ratio of the volume? Well, that's units cubed, so I take my scale factor. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at number one, just to kind of look at what this means for similar, and then we'll take a look at number 15. So it says, are the two figures similar? If so, get the scale factor of the first, the second. Okay, so again, when we match up, we're not going small, small, medium, with medium. We're going height with height, length with length, match up the same dimensions. So I'm going to start off with my height. So I'm going to say height of my first compared to the height of the second. I'm going to match up. This is a base edge, so I'm just going to say base of the first compared to base of the second. All right, what's the height of my first one? 15. And the height of the second? Six. Six. What does that simplify down to? Good. Five to two. So if they're similar, we should see the same ratio for my bases. All right, what's my base edge for the first one? <coughs> Ten. Base edge for the second is four. Does this reduce down to five halves? Yeah. yeah. So because our dimensions have the same ratio, that we have it similar. So are two figures similar? Yes. And it says, if so, give the scale factor. What is my scale factor? Five to two. Five to two. So that's going to be the scale factor or the like ratio for anything part. measured in units. I like this unit, this part. It's pretty nice. So this is going to be the ratio of my slant heights, because that's measured in units. This is the ratio of I think what else we have here? The lateral edge, because that can measure for units. What would be the ratio of my surface areas? Square. Units squared. So we just take our ratio, and we square it. So what would that be? 25, 25 to 4. Did I have to find my surface area? No. I didn't have to do anything to find my surface area. I just simply took my scale factor and squared it. What would be the ratio of the volumes? It would be different. What is 5 cubed? Uh, 125 to is 8. So again, we didn't have to actually find the volumes. You could go through, find your volume, and then uh, put it in a fraction and simplify it. But if you know your scale factor, you can get there a lot easier. So let's take a look at why this is helpful for us. Let's take a look at number 15. So just look right back side for number 15. So they give us the volume and they tell us that these are similar. And then it says they give us the surface area, the smaller one. Find the surface area, the bigger one. They didn't give me any of my dimensions, so I can't just plug it into my formula because I don't have those dimensions. We, in fact, don't even know what the shape is. <coughs> but they gave us our ratio, or sorry, they gave us our volumes. We can find that ratio. Okay. So let's go ahead. This is our volumes. What are volumes measured in? Units cubed. Units cubed. Okay, I'm going to put that in parentheses. So volumes is measured in units cubed. So we want to keep that in mind when we do a ratio. Okay, so I'm gonna we I'm gonna go smaller to larger. So eight to twenty-seven. All right. In order to get to my surface areas, I need to go back to my very original units. So I have units squared. I'm gonna find. I want to go back to my original units. So these are units cubed. How do I so original units and root units squared. If this is my units cubed, how do I get back to just units? You cube root. root it. So what's the cube root of 8? 2. What's the cube root of 27? 3. Three. So my ratio of anything measured in units, the ratio of the perimeters, if there is such thing to this, is 2 to 3. Measure, or the ratio of the heights is 2 to 3. All right. 
But they want to know something about surface area. So surface area is measured in units squared. So I need my ratio for my units squared. Four, 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 four nine. nine. Good. So we had to first get back to units so they could square. So this is the ratio that I'm using here. Okay. They said that they gave us the smaller one. So I'm just going to set up my proportion. I know my small to big simplifies down to 49. They gave me my small was 36. And they want us to find the large one. How do we solve this? Cross, Cross multiply. So 4x equals, you can multiply 9 times 36. I'm going to leave it like that so I can save myself time and just divide by 4. So again, we had to first find our ratio before we put in the proportion. Now we just cross multiply like we did earlier this year and back now. Divide by 4. Let's see what we can reduce. I can reduce 36 and 4. What does that reduce down to? Ooh. So then what's my uh, x value? 81. 81. What did we find? What was that? Surface area of the larger. So my surface area, what's that measured at? <laughs> units. Well, we're given the units. Oh, we were getting the units. Thank you. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Meters squared. Thank you, Lady. Connor, what was your question? Because it's 9 times 36, we're not adding there. So you can either divide the 9 by 4 or the 36 by 4. Okay. Questions with that? Okay, so that's that's the gist. It's a small topic for today. I just want you to, once you're done with your quiz, then you can go and start working on your now, go ahead and grab your assignment sheet. Our homework's a little different than what it says. Because we do have our quiz, we won't be spending as much time doing actual problems together. So you won't have as much done in class. So for your homework, just do the evens on both papers. Okay, so you can write that on your assignment sheet. Your homework is just evens on our similar solids and evens on our spheres. In our other classes, we've done some actually in classes for our internship class work, but since we won't be doing as much today, we have those room. Okay, questions about what our homework is? Okay. All right, so. Yes, so just evens on both of those. Okay, so you can go ahead and tuck that away. Um, You'll just work on that after your quiz if you have extra time so you can start working on your homework. Um, but now let's go ahead and take a look at our homework. Questions on that before we take our quiz? Yeah. Um, okay. We're going to be checking homework a little differently today. Just to help save on time, I've posted the keys on Blackboard. I want you to actually pull out your phones. I know, crazy thing. Whoa. You are Whoa. permitted to pull out your phone to check your homework with the key on Blackboard. If I see you on your phone for anything else, like Instagram, like I saw someone this morning, I will take your phone. So use your phone wisely. I will not say who it was. Use your phone wisely. You should be using it only to check the answers with the key on Blackboard. It's just on the announcements page, but once you get on Blackboard, It'll say, homework check for 4-11. So check your homework with the key. As you check your homework, we're going to write our questions up on the board. So let's say you don't know how to find the lateral area for number 2 on Pyramid. Just click the right 2, lateral area. If the one you already have a question for, <laughs> number six. we'll go over however much time we have, and I'll start off with the ones that need the most attention. Yes. What third? Third base? Oh wait, sorry, prism. Um, just area the base. Okay, um, so again, as you check your homework, look at the key, look at the setup for it. If you're not, if you still understand what's going on, put your questions up here, and I'll go to the ones that um, most people have questions on. Now, is there a question about what we're supposed to be doing? Okay. Wait, what is it coming around the stage? Yes, so you do that while I come to check your homework. Again, you do need to commit your formulas to memory. Oh, shoot. I forgot them all. Now, our first day, we talked about all kinds of areas. For the most part, you have these already memorized from previous classes. Our new ones it's are regular, regular polygons. That's our one half app. Abathum and perimeter. Abathum is from your center to the side. And we have to use that right triangle. Sometimes we have to do Pythagorean theorem. 
Sometimes it's to do 30, 60, 90, 45, exactly. 45, it's 90 30. triangles. It's not going to be and able to sometimes we have to do three. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Our other new thing was the rhombus and kite, the one half diagonal times diagonal. These other ones, um, you already knew before. The parallelogram is just the same as our rectangle. We talked about how if we took that triangle and moved it over to the rectangle. Ah, but so that's what you've learned. Uh, Are you going to erase that? Um, <laughs> no, we get no, you're not going to keep it. No! Like I said, I wasn't lying when I said you need to know your formulas. Alright, so then our other thing that we learned with area was that we had the cheese wedge, um, so like we have up there, and our cheese wedge is just simply, are we finding part of the area, <laughs> or are we finding well, we part of the circumference? <laughs> you already know your area formula from before, you already know your circumference formula from before. Yeah. So the only new thing you had to do was find the fraction. So how much of my circle do I have? For example, for this piece here, how much of my circle is this? It's 120 degrees. So what fraction is that of my circle? One third. One third. So this is just one third of my circle. So then how much of my area do I have? One third. One third of my area. So just do one third times area. That's but crazy. maybe they don't ask for area. Maybe instead they ask for the arc length. What do we call the entire arc length? Circumference. Circumference. So all we're looking for here is one third of circumference. Okay. So all you have to do is just find what fraction of your circle you have, and then multiply that by whatever it is they're asking for. Area, multiply by area. And length, multiply by the circle. Oh. Uh, whoa. If everything else was a shaded region, how would we solve for that? If everything else was a shaded region. So if we found the area of the white, so then I would find my area of my chunk here. This is three-fourths of my circle, so three-fourths of area. And then I would add into the area of the triangle. And we know forms for every triangle, one half base times height. And since it's already perpendicular, our bases and heights are just perpendicular. Because it's radius. Okay, so areas, a lot of it you had already known before, these were our new things. Okay, and then we talked about prisms and cylinders. Our volume is area of the base times height for both of them. My lateral area is just talking about the area of our sides. That's our perimeter or circumference times height. Our surface area, we just take that and add two bases to it, because we have two bases to consider as well. Now, our pyramids and cones are really just the same formula, except our cone is not as much as the cylinder. <laughs> our cone is only a third of that cylinder. Whoa. So it's just one third of our cone. So one third of the area of the base times height. And our lateral area, I know I've got my cone here, but when we think of a pyramid, those slant faces, or the lateral faces, were triangles. What is the formula for a triangle area? One half base times height. That's my one half. My bases would be all of the perimeter. That's all my base side together. And the height of that triangle is that slant height. So that's why we have the one half perimeter times slant height. And then again, surface area is just your lateral, and we only have one base, and we only have one base to it. Um, okay. Questions where the the volume of like the inside or the, the where the two things together? Can we assume that there's two bottom like two bases, or or almost <coughs> like two bars? Um, yes, unless it tells you otherwise. Yeah. So like the one problem that you had like this where it said find the volume outside the cone but inside the cylinder. What? If they said surface area, they would have to specify. Um, well, if, they re if it says the cone has been removed, then that would indicate that that's empty on top, right? Um, but if they wanted that lid, they would have to specify that. Which then you wouldn't need the cone at all. Really. But yeah, they would have to specify. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the base. So it's whatever your shape is. For a cone, what is my shape of the base? Circle. Circle. So area of the base, area of the circle. Um, for a pyramid, you could have any type of shape. 
So if it's a shape, let's say it's a hexagon on the bottom, how do you find area of the hexagon? One hexagon. Whoa. <laughs> if it was a parallelogram, then you would find your area of the hexagon. <laughs> so it depends on your shape as to which format you're using. So it means area of the hexagon. Okay. Um, so I just want to recap our formulas. Okay. Do we actually have that many people that want to see three? Yes. No, I, I actually have every single like, the groups right now. Yeah, I got all of it right, but the yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 we're the total area. The total, the total area? area? Okay. I got all of it right, but yeah, I don't know how I got it wrong. Oh, 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 okay, Zach, Mr. Special. I think I'm going to go. That's two. Okay. That's good. Okay, so the total surface area of the star is. What's the what's the fraction though of it? I mean not fraction, but like the star guy. What's the uh, root? Is that, is so if we don't have calculator, your answer would be this. We can't combine those because one's a radical two oh. and the other one's not. So that would be your quiz. Yeah. Like yeah. On your quiz, you just leave it like that. Oh, okay. Guys, <laughs> oh, okay. this is correct. Yeah, I got it right. Okay. Do we have any questions? I have to solve that. What's that? How do you like uh? <laughs> you would have to have a calculator. You. Never mind. No. Are you sure? All right, um, so, yay, that was easy. Why was it saying? I played all of them. All of my friends, I can't do that. They got a copy right there for all of them. Oh, 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 all of them don't oh, have units. Yes. Guys, guys, if you gave this to me on the quiz, you would lose points. I would lose points. Why? Minus five points. Units squared. Unit squared. How many units? Squared. Unit squared. Units. 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 Squared. Units. Units. How do you know which one's the cube? Square. Cube. If you're finding the area. Lateral area. Surface area. Area of your face. Oh, face. Area. Yeah. Area. 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 I don't know how to factor. I'm sorry. So if you missed one oh, question, I'm like, correct. All of your quizzes are one page from that. Here, here. Could be. We've had factors. Oh, yeah, I had a nine. All right, so at number 10, uh, there's two to number 10. So yeah. 17. Raise your hand if you want the first number 10. <laughs> Raise your hand if you need the second number 10. The, the one, the one? Okay, we'll the second. First? No. That's not like That's okay. for All right, so our second number 10, it says find the total volume. We just need the total, we need the volume of the top. Volume at the bottom. Add them together. Okay. So our volume at the top. That's a pyramid. One third area of the base times one third. My area of my base is six times six. My height is six. Okay. Volume of the bottom. So this is a uh, prism here. Area of your base times height. My area of my base is again thirty-six. My height is six. So six times six. Thirty-six times six. You just add them together. Um, for this guy, mm -hmm. you just simply put in your variables into your formula. My lateral area is one perimeter <laughs> times my slant height. They told us my lateral area is 80, so that goes in for lateral area. I have one half. My perimeter can be x plus 3 
plus x plus 3, plus x plus 3, plus x plus 3. Um, so you could have just gone ahead and said 4x plus 12. And then my slant height was x. Um, now, I went ahead and multiplied my 1 half and 4 together. You might have not. You might have distributed um, the 4 and said 1 half 4x plus 12. You just have to distribute that 1 half then. Um, and then I distributed my x. Now, I went ahead and divided both sides by 2 rather than multiplying it out. If you didn't, you would have had 2x squared plus 6x minus 80 equals 0. Um, and then you would have had a factor of GCF of 2x squared plus 3 minus 3x minus 4. So I just went ahead and divided 2. If you didn't, you just factor out and divide. Um, Questions with this? No. Uh, well, yes. Let's I take a look at seven. Yes. Yes. No. No. Because, okay. So seven and eight are actually very similar in that they're asking for volume and they tell us that the base is a particular shape. So again, our volume is one third area of the base half height. For seven, my base is a triangle. What's the formula for area of a triangle? One half base times height. One half base times height. So I first found my area of my base, one half base times height. What's the formula for area of a hexagon? A regular hexagon. One half AP. One half AP. The height. So one half AP. Area of your base is one half AP. So you had to find some pieces of information. Oh, for my gosh. triangle, I need to find oh. my height. When I draw that in, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So I just applied my rules for 30, 60, 90. So I got my height was 3 root 3. And again, my base, the entire side was 6. They gave up to us. Then you just simplify put it into your formula. Now my height is the height of the shape, which they gave us was 9. And then same thing for my hexagon down here. We had to actually solve for our apothem. Um, for the hexagon, the entire angle is 120, so when it gets cut, we have another 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, and so they gave my short, so I have my apothem, then would be 6 root <coughs> That's my apothem, my perimeter is just the 12 times 6, and then again, simplify. My height of the entire solid is 2, so we just simplify it. Whoa. I just took, took my triangle in the box. They gave us that it was all sides of sides. And then I drew in my height because it's equilateral, and I have this is 16. So I know that this piece then is 3. So they gave us our base. Oh, that's right. And then we found our height. Because it's equilateral, so it's 16. Okay. It's the ones that connect the lateral edges, sides. So this one. Okay. Um, I have, I, I, um, for number nine, I don't get like, where you find the lateral edge. Yeah, you, I know. You find it. Yeah, same. Same. So in our pyramids, we have two right triangles that we work with. We have the height with our slant height. So my height and the slant height. And then we also have my slant height with the edge. My slant height and the lateral edge. So we had to first, they told us that our base edge was 6. So that meant that this would be 3. Yeah. Um, and our base edge over here, so still 6, <coughs> this would be 3. Um, and then what else did they tell us? The, oh, we use our volume to solve that our height was 4. So then we do Pythagorean theorem. But that was five. Isn't it slant height for that one? Five. Why didn't you use slant height for so they, we solved from our volume formula and found that our height height was 4. I put that into my Pythagorean theorem to get my slant height was 5. Oh, but cool. like, what? Yeah, it's a different height. It's a different height. How did you get the slant height? And then I used my lateral, my slant height for the edge. Oh. So now that I know okay. my slant height is 5, then I can use my slant height. 
And I did the right there with three five to find my head. So you found it. Okay. So but I've got my right triangle here and my right triangle here. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. So yeah. What, like what? What is the lateral edge again? It's like it's where your faces come together on the sides. Okay. So is it all of them or is it just one? They're all going to be the same. Okay. Because we had the that, that square. Yeah. Um, so each of these triangles is going to have the same base. Uh, the same. For the square. All right, so we will go ahead and transition to our quiz now. Again, once you're done with your quiz, if you have time remaining, you can just go and start working on that homework. Even done with you. You can't cover the whole thing, Miss Carter. Sorry, Jamie. Oh no, she thought I had a plan for this. Yeah. Uh, 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 she used that so she can't use her x-ray vision. Oh, uh, 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 I'll use your x-ray that way. They're just making a big deal out of it, so I had to cover it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, if you'd like to listen to music during this, you may. Um, you have the remainder of class about 35 minutes to go ahead. Do your clues. When you're done, you'll turn into the baskets like normal. Thank you. 